So, hi, Josh. I'm Patty Mullen, and this is the first time I've tried this. Like, I have conversations with open source software developers regularly, and uh, just, what are you building? And I thought, why not record it? And I wanted this to be a little bit different than most things I've seen, where mostly it's like, oh, you're writing this piece of software. Who could the potential users for it be? And yes, I'm interested in that, but I'm also like, as a library developer talking to another library developer, what is your experience doing that like? And that's a little bit more of the focus of this, but uh, yeah, Josh, um, Josh created Buckaroo and I'll let Josh introduce himself. Oh yeah, so I created uh, Bluefish, oh. you created Buckaroo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, hi, uh, I'm Josh Pollock. I'm a fourth year PhD student at MIT. Uh, I work in the visualization group under Arvind Satya Narayan, who you may be uh, know from uh, Vega and Vega Light and that uh, sort of ecosystem. Um, yeah, so my main focus uh, is on um, building tools for diagramming. Um, and Bluefish is basically like that project, which I've been working on for a few years now. Uh, yeah, I can do a quick sort of overview of Bluefish. If yeah, let's I let's do that. Um, I looked at the video you sent me earlier, and then I saw yeah. the Loom call, and the Loom call like helped a lot more contextualize it. But uh, why don't you explain Bluefish? Yeah, sure. So. Um, maybe there's a good way to share screen. Um, here. you should be able to just click on present now and yep. then, oh, I see. Okay. So are, were you familiar with grammar of graphic is Altair and Vega grammar of graphics also? Yeah. So the, the Vega ecosystem, Vega light is based on the grammar of graphics as well. Um, yeah, and I am pretty familiar with the grammar of graphics. Like I've read the book at some point. Uh, well, I have too many tabs. This is always the case for me, which is fine. Uh, we'll fix it like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think like the, I can just walk briefly through this kind of like tweet thread that I made earlier, because I think it's a decent summary of the story and what we're trying to do. Good. Um, so basically, Bluefish is a diagramming library for the web. Uh, the key idea is sort of like you should be able to code diagrams the same way you code UIs using declarative components and reactivity. Um, and the source of this project for me was when I was an undergrad and I was learning functional programming, I was getting really frustrated with the concepts because I couldn't really see like all the concepts in functional programming. Mm -hmm. And I found like, there's this great um, tool for visualizing Python code and JavaScript and stuff called Python Tutor that lets you step through um, a program as it executes and understand kind of how the, uh, what CS education folks call the notional machine, which is some sort of representation of how uh, the computer is working as it's executing this program. Um, and this is a really great way for understanding how programs work, but there's not really a good equivalent for functional programs. Um, yes, you can write functional programs in, in like JavaScript or something, but the visualizations don't really um, look the same way that people teach functional programming. And so I was setting out to like build Python tutor for functional programming. Um, but it turns out to be like really hard to do this because to build sophisticated visualizations like these, it's helpful to have a really good diagramming library. Um, uh, and there just wasn't one at the time I, I was setting out to do this, which was like 2016, 2018. Um, and there still isn't, <laughs> there still isn't really. Um, and the, the reason for that, uh, the thing that makes diagramming hard is these overlapping relationships. So if you're trying to write these kind of pointers, you know, these arrows here, uh, what you might want to do when you're writing a component like this is you have this sort of like stack object, which is like a big nested thing of like, okay, there's a stack and the stack has like um, a bunch of pairs of variable names and values. 
and then you like go in and like okay variables like a piece of text and then you have this heap structure which is also like a big chunk of stuff where like there's a bunch of tuple objects inside of it and so you have these like deeply nested tree hierarchies mm -hmm. that let you sort of manage the complexity of your diagram the same way in a user interface you write some custom component but the problem is in these diagrams you now need to like reach inside that tree hierarchy and like draw an arrow from some place deeply in the stack hierarchy to some place in the heap hierarchy or some place deeply in the heap hierarchy to like another point. And this is really difficult to manage um, because UIs are basically not built this way. UIs are thought of as these kind of like separate tree structures that don't interact with each other. Um, so kind of the, the thing that Bluefish provides is this way of selecting existing components so here this kind of selection concept and i'm intentionally invoking this sort of like d3 notion of selection here mm -hmm. or or the the dom notion of query selection it lets you select these existing elements and then describe uh relationships between them so i would imagine if i wanted to write something like that i would probably look a little bit and search for the wrong terms and and figure out that I couldn't build something like that. Like I, mm -hmm. I couldn't find existing research. And then I'd probably start writing it and realize it's much more, com I might get something to work. And then I'd probably have something that kind of half works. And then later I'd discover like, oh, here are other projects that were doing something similar. And then maybe I would discover Bluefish. Yeah. Um, what so I'd be interested to see like what does what would it look like to draw that picture statically like do you just start off like I want to just statically draw this picture and I'm just going to like write that with SVG what did Python Tutor do and then what yeah. would Python Tutor in Bluefish look like and like I don't know if you oh sure yeah um if you mean statically like uh in code or in a if you just wanted to write an SVG that like looks like that, mm. if, you, if you don't have that, that's okay. Like, oh yeah, I guess uh, I mean I could like inspect element in here, and you could see sort of what this output looks like if that's yeah, uh, yeah. So Python Tutor uses tables to do a lot of this, which is like probably surprising at first. I was definitely surprised when I saw this, um, but it essentially uses a bunch of nested tables to represent this information. So uh, that's essentially doing some form of layout. So every like stack frame is like a bunch of nested divs and then like tables inside the divs. And you can like keep going down inside of these, these, uh, classes and see like, okay, so there's this, um, variable row. And then there's like a whole table of the variable rows. And then there's like a header applied to that variable row. And then that's like the stack frame. It's recursive. So, yeah, yeah, no, but I think that's the point is like, and this is one interesting departure from like statistical graphics, for example, is like statistical graphics are much flatter than diagrams here. This is like a very, very deeply nested structure. And so like, you know, I think there's like two ways to look at this problem. Like one way is coming from the user interface perspective and one is coming from the like grammar of graphics perspective. And I think this is where like the grammar of graphics doesn't, has some notions of like nesting with like, you know, people talk about faceting and stuff like that. But in, in diagrams, the notion of nesting is like really central. There's so many levels of nesting here that like, um, it's much more salient. So I, I guess I'm sort of retracing my steps. Like I was a, at, at a certain point, I was trying to attack this problem from like a grammar graphics perspective. And then it was like, well, how do I deal with all this like nesting? How do I think about that? And that's where like the UI perspective yeah. Um, actually becomes really useful because in UIs, like the notion of this sort of like nested composition is really um, central. Uh, yeah. So I can, you know, you can keep going table, table, blah, 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 tuple. Like How do they the do the, the links between them? Yeah. So the links are using a separate library called JS Plum, uh, which, so that, yeah. So they're handled as like these SVG pieces mm -hmm. on top of it. And I think that 
basically like there are globally unique IDs assigned to all the things that are then like pointed to in code. And then like, it's just all compiled down at the end to like specific positions. So none of the like information that this is an arrow connecting two things is actually <laughs> preserved anywhere in this representation. It's just kind of, um, this looks like yeah. nothing I would ever want to have to write. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what would a similar library with, um, Bluefish look like, or yeah, I can show you that because we have a little bit of a recreation of that on our um, on our website here. So uh, let's see if I can. So okay. so basically, like we can take advantage of the nest nesting the same way you you write uh, UI components. So like, there's this Python tutor component. And within that, we have a global frame component and a heap component, which are like those two pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's inside of a stack H, which is like a horizontal stack. Like some people call this a row or an H concat or H stack. Like they're all sort of the same, same concept. Um, and then to write the arrows, uh, you're kind of doing this thing. So, so, uh, Basically, Could we, we named... look at this in a full screen? Can oh, you... yeah. Uh, let's see. I think I can do this. And now we'll have like a... There we go. And then maybe yeah. increase the font a bit. Yeah. Okay. Was... See your data. Right. Yeah. So we have some data here. Like I could change it and, you know, or these could both point to one or something. Um, this is kind of fun to play around with, honestly. I, I like... <laughs> I, it's kind of fun to just sometimes play around with uh, the it, representation. And to make sure that, so could you put a comment of like the function call or whatever is going on here? So I'm guessing the stuff, the tuple one, four, tuple three, 10, that's like yeah. this heap of memory uh, for the program. And then the tuple yeah. zero, one, two up top, that is. Yeah. So this is like, Right. So this is like the thing that looks like global frame is, is being driven here. So this is like C D X and yeah. then like pointer pointer five. So you're and calling some function with argument arguments C D X. Uh, yeah. So stack slot is like basically just building an object. It's not doing anything fancy. Uh, well, okay. I can't see the header. Uh, stack. Let's see. So basically like, what Stackslot is doing is just building an object. It's not doing anything fancy. I see. Uh, it's just a way to like make it read a bit better than like you could write a variable C value uh, pointer zero. And pointer zero is also just like a smart constructor, basically. It's not is doing anything. Is that part of Bluefish or is that part of? No, that's just plain JavaScript. There's nothing Bluefishy about that. So when I when I read grammar of graphics, I'm kind of intimidated because I'm like, there's going to be a lot of syntax there to learn. But then this yeah. looks pretty approachable. Yeah, I mean, I I think like part of the intention is to piggyback on existing concepts as much as possible, um, and like take advantage of the extensibility of like the host language in this case JavaScript as much as possible. So. Um, I guess part of the hope is, yeah, like minimize the number of fundamentally new things to learn. Um, I think that the things that are unique about Bluefish to learn are like the specific kind of layout components like stack H. Mm -hmm. And then the reference component is definitely the like most unique part of the system. Um, but everything else surrounding it is like some combination of JavaScript and solid JS, which is a UI framework. Um, and then if they were writing Python tutor, uh, I, th I think we want to look at a different, the first thing we were looking at, if they were writing Python tutor, they would be writing a bunch of six lines, six to 22, just each frame is going to have a representation about like that. Yeah. So like, if we go back here and I'm like, the, the way that you would make this full example is like, um, Python tutor uses PDB to generate some JSON 
representing the the structure of the program as it executes and then it has like a visualization step where it takes that json and like visualizes it so you can imagine like getting a bunch of like a list of json structures for each frame yep. of this and then feeding it through the visualization uh here so uh like you could add a I'm not very good at <laughs> remembering how to write sliders, but you could like put an input here that's like a slider thing and then have that like index into the data, right? And then have like, oh, now I'm showing like this frame of the data and then I'm showing the next frame of the data. Um, nice. Uh, yeah. And there's stack slot. There's stack slot is going to, at some point it's going to return something that looks like JSON. So you could just have this actually JSON Exactly. So like when I have this representation before, like uh, this is going to be, I, I don't remember what pointer returns. It's going to be something like, you know, type pointer. It's probably not exactly this, but you'll get some structure like. So stack this, slot is just say. a little bit of sugar for that while you're. Exactly. Uh, got it. Yeah. So like. Yeah, I just I think it's it's a lot easier to read it when they look like objects rather than like the kind of JSON representation. But you can, um, I think it'd be very straightforward to like serialize all your data as JSON, parse it in JavaScript, and then build these structures, right? So again, like the fact that you can use JSON is not like a Bluefish specific thing. It just falls out of the fact that we're like working in an embedded JavaScript context. If that makes sense. This is um, cool. Like this is, it, where do you think people using this are going to stumble? Like what, what do you think they'll get quickly? What do you think? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I mean, um, there's a few different spots. So I think one thing first is like, you do need to understand how to build user interfaces in a UI framework. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some complexity there. The good news is that like, because we're using features of an existing UI framework, we can be like, oh, you want to know how reactivity works? Like here's an article for solid JS or react or whatever on like how to think about that rather than having to like rebuild that infrastructure necessarily. Although I suspect we'll have to write our own docs about how those things work. Um, uh, and then like, you know, how, how does like JSX notation work? Oh, like those sorts of things are, are like one of the hurdles. Um, thinking about how refs work is definitely complicated. Um, I think it's something that we'll, we're going to continue to iterate on over time, like how to make that easier, how to think about sort of um, the overlap, overlapping relations more easily. Uh, I would think what yeah. would be most helpful for this would be just writing, hey, here's this toy language or that toy language. And here is an implement, like show some examples and just kind of explain what you were doing here, what you were doing there. Um, mm -hmm. And making it the easiest for someone to just start coding on it. Like, like yes, they're going to want to embed this into their docs, but then... I don't know, like, how does Sphinx do it? How does MD, whatever Markdown doc, do, like, that's a, like, if I could just start playing with it, and you can, like, you have, you have a playground with solid JS, and then people can start playing with it. And, like, if they like that, they like that experience, I think they're going to be like, okay, I'll go through the rest of the pain. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think one of our short-term goals is to keep building out more examples. I think like we've seen with the D3 e ecosystem, for example, that having a really like large compelling set of examples is, is very helpful for people to get excited about the project and to understand what's possible with the project. Um, yeah. So, so I stumbled onto you because you were, we were commenting on the same Twitter thread about reactivity. What parts of this are reactive versus what parts are you, is this web page, is this playground reloading really quickly? So every time you edit the code, it is doing like a full reload. Okay. Um, so there's nothing reactive per se there. 
the reactive part comes in because you can like write reactive code in the specification. I think I have a good example. Some of it doesn't quite work because um, like, let me see, I, I can do a simple, yeah, I always have to look at like the solid JS examples. Um, so like I could write, you know, there's a good button. I just need a button example. Um, <laughs> so like, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, so what I could do is like add a button here. Um, so, uh, button on click equals set count. Yeah. And then, uh, right. Put some, put some data in, in the middle of this. Right. So like I'll put count here or something. Now I have some like simple button. Okay, cool. Um, but now, you know, I could use this value in the, how would I, what would be the easiest way to do this? Um, I guess I'll just move this inside the, wait, actually what I can do because I'm in solid is I can define the signal out here. So this is a signal, right? So like, um, it's some reactive value that mm -hmm. every time you call set count updates that, and then everything else that depends on it. So, um, I'm doing a lot of things that, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not expecting good coding practices. We're just, yeah. we're live coding um, in ways you did, like just examples. Yeah. I don't, so yeah. I could do this and now that, oh yeah. Certain things don't work like I expect them to work. <laughs> That's okay. That's uh. Click it again. What happens now? I don't, it's actually like not, oh, wait, wait, that, there we go. Nope. I don't know why this is breaking actually. That's interesting. <laughs> why is it the string um well you're not passing count in do you want to pass count in to data um well line 10 i could so it should be in scope and because this is like a reactive value it should update every time that updates but yeah I, it's possible if i just pass count in that um, oh, I see. Count is defined up there. Stuff, actually. No, I think there's some, I don't know why this is happening. This is really interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think like some, I would have to understand. Yeah. I'd have to understand solid JS. Yeah. I think like the reactivity, the interactivity part in bluefish is definitely still a work in progress. There are some, um, some things work and some things don't work basically uh i we have to kind of redo the architecture internally um i mean it, yeah. to me it looks like it works enough that um if i i think if i were faced with one of these problems i would rather use bluefish and try to work with it as much as i could rather than come up with my own um and yeah, just if Bluefish doesn't do everything I wanted to do, uh, depending on how fleshed out your examples were, it probably does enough. And like, that's not going to make or break whatever diagramming app I have. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's always possible to like force reload the entire diagram. Mm -hmm. If you like write your code. I, I've used that as a workaround sometimes and like, okay, you like lose some of the performance benefits of, of like fine grade reactivity, but for examples of the size, it's not noticeable. Um, so maybe I'm too concentrated on just like programming examples, which will be small. And I'm like, you're not going to have performance problems yeah. there. What, when do you get bigger graphs and scenes you want to render? 
Well, I think that's the thing about this is another difference between diagrams and statistical graphics is okay. that a lot of the complexity in diagrams is many relationships between a few elements and all those elements are like different things. Whereas in statistical graphics, you might have like a million of the same kind of element, like a million like circles or something. Yeah. Um, that's like fairly uncommon in diagrams where in diagrams you're more like, I have like 20 elements and they're all related to each other. And like, yeah, it's to explain uh, to humans way. for things that humans probably created and yeah until you debug something but yeah so like here you know in this diagram right like there are like five different concepts that like you have like the notion of a variable a pointer a tuple like there's all of these concepts but there's actually very few elements here um and all the like interesting complexity is coming from the relationships between those elements the hierarchies etc and so i think like um our performance scaling is actually pretty good. Uh, like layout is linear pretty much. So nice. uh, it scales well, um, but you know, you don't need, yeah, it, it doesn't need to be like super optimized compared to like, oh, I'm drawing a map and like, I have a point for every like city in the U S or something like that. Oh. Um, is bluefish, uh, open source? Yeah. Yeah, it's all on GitHub. Uh, can you uh, yeah, I can. just show the repo? I'll, I'll put a link in to whatever anyone pays attention to yeah. later. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Here's the, uh, yeah, I can walk you through the architecture if you want to see that, um, whatever you'd be interested in. So have you been the primary developer on this? Yeah, so it's me and then there's two, uh, students, Catherine and Grace, who were undergrads working with me and are now doing master's projects on uh, things related to Bluefish. So um, Catherine is working on an accessibility tool, like a screen reader tool that can take uh, output like Bluefish scene graphs and, and make them traversable by screen readers. And Grace is working on a bi-directional editor. So like uh, an editor that lets you both like do stuff in a, in a canvas and um, like write programs and have those two representations be tied to each other. Uh, why don't you show me the bit that you're most uh, proud of? In the code base? Yeah. Sure. Hmm. I mean, like, I really actually like the architecture of Bluefish. It's designed to be extremely extensible. So, um, uh, like, extensibility all the way down. So, like, um, What's the, so, so basically like a bluefish scene graph has two types of nodes in it. There's a, I guess I can, there's basically like three main files. So the biggest main file is a scene graph file. And basically scene graphs are, are two types of nodes. There's like a layout node, which has some B box bounding box information on it. And like who, it, what its children are. And then there's a ref node, which is capturing that like reference to another node information. Um, and you know, you're never really manipulating the scene graph node directly as a user. You're either creating a layout node or creating a ref node. So like, um, if we look at, well, this should be, I think this should, it should have been renamed stack age at some point. So this is, yeah, this is old actually. This is interesting code. Cause this is for a decently sized, um, um, front end library. Most front end libraries I see, it's just like, okay, well, we do HTML and like we maybe in React, maybe we do some interactivity, but it's a lot of that. This is different because you're like, here is the thing I want to represent and here's how I've made that representable. But it's, it's much more abstract than most front end code I've seen. I've like yeah. from what it sounds like from what you're working on. Yeah, I guess like, um, I think it's, it's very close to like a UI framework code base is how, what I'd say. And a lot of the code in some of our basic examples are inspired directly from Jetpack Compose's basic layout examples, hmm. uh, which is like the Android, uh, UI framework, which is open source and like Apache license, I think. So it's like a nice code base to look at. 
Um, so basically, like when you write stuff, like there's a little bit more interaction stack layout than I would like. Uh, let's see a good, good entry point here. Yeah. So I think actually the stack component. So stack is like some is both like horizontal and vertical stacking, but basically it returns a layout node that mm -hmm. has some like layout behavior and some rendering behavior, like painting behavior. So um, what are the args for this? Just highlight with Bluefish stack props and stack props look like? Stack, uh, stack props are these. So like you give some sort of alignment, which mm -hmm. is like some horizontal or vertical alignment. You say like, which direction are we aligning in? And then to specify the, uh, the like spacing, you can either give the spacing between neighboring components or like the total width or height of the container. And if you specify both, it will resize the objects to fit in that container. So it's kind of like a flex layout. I see. So it just be eminently clear. It's stack as in bop, 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 or bop, 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 not yeah. computer stack frame. No, um, no, no, no. This is not specific to, to the Python tutor example. Uh, yeah. And like, there's, yeah, it's a DSL, so you have much less stuff to worry about, and uh, Bluefish should do the rest versus like all of the the whole realm of CSS possibilities or CSS possibilities for ways to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, so yeah, I think one person was like, "Oh, so you're building a better CSS," and like in some sense, that's <laughs> true. I try not to think about that because CSS is like a huge API surface and very well optimized, et cetera, et cetera, but. Um, I think like we are consciously trying to mimic the layout representations on like in Swift UI and Jetpack Compose. Um, I think it would be clear. helpful for your users if you just made an example library of the layouts that are just like the simplest way of showing it in Bluefish. Um, here are all the things you can do. And just say like it might be possible to do some other things, but that could require more work. But if you're, if the list of things you want to do fits inside of this, you're gonna have like ten or fifteen props to learn instead of two hundred. Right. We have like, I don't know if this is what you're describing. We do have like some documentation about individual components in the system. Mm -hmm. So like, this and this is kind of loosely interactive. This part is Ooh. actually reactive, I think. So you can like, you know, change the spacing. But there's also like, um, yeah, this is not interactive. But if you set uh, the spacing and the total, and then you don't give widths to the rectangles inside of it, then the it'll size the, the rectangles to fit that space. So uh, another yeah. question, you do human computer interaction research? That's mm -hmm. your, what is the yeah. conference? That you, what's the big deal conference you go to every year? Um, there's a few. Uh, so within data visualization, there's the IEEE Viz conference, which is sort of the big conference that we attend. Mm -hmm. um, within HCI more broadly, the two big ones, I mean, I guess there are three, but uh, is there's CHI, uh, there's WIST, and there's also CSCW, which is like social computing, um, kind of like users, et cetera. Uh, Kai is kind of like the HCI conference. It's really big. And then WIST is sort of this like build cool stuff, the conference. And it kind of started as a reaction to Kai where they're like user studies are good, but like some research, it's like hard to do user studies for. And so we need a venue for for like building demos and stuff. And, that, <laughs> and that's what WIST is. Um, huh. yeah, uh, so those are the big three. Cool. Well, thank you for your time, Josh. Uh, 